Today we'll be talking about how to make a simple one rope bridge. Before you is the equipment that we're going to use today. You could do it with uh, fewer carabiners or you could do it with more. What I have is uh, three locking carabiners. You could use non-locking if you had to, but ro uh, locking is recommended. I have my cordelette in the right hand corner. That's what I'll use to make my Swiss seat. And then I have my rope. This is a military surplus rope. It's a dynamic rope, so it stretches. That's not usually what you want for a rope bridge. You want a static rope so that it won't stretch as much. But this will work fine for today's demonstration. First thing we're going to do is the Swiss seat. Uh, this is my cordelette. This is just a piece of uh, accessory cordage. You could also use tubular nylon or old climbing rope. Um, anything that's rated to be weight bearing um, and depending on your size the rope will need to be at least 10, 12, 15 feet long. Okay, I'm gonna find the middle of the rope. I'm gonna do that by taking both ends of the rope, putting them together, trace down until I hit the end. I have this, this bite here, that's the middle. This is gonna go on my non-dominant side, so I'm right-handed, so this will go on my left side, left hip. I'm going to pull the rope back around my body and both sides are going to meet at the front. Once I get them to the front, I'm going to cross them over a couple of times and there's really no minimum on how many times you need to do this. Some say two, some say three. The more crosses you put in there, the wider it's going to be and if you're larger, that will be more comfortable. From a safety standpoint, it makes no difference. Okay, so after I've cinched this up tight, the rope's ready to go between my legs. So I'm going to take the left rope, goes to my left side. The rope goes from top to bottom behind the rope around my waist. Now the rope could either go to the outside or it could go to the inside. If it goes to the outside, when I pull this up, it's going to slide in on itself. That's going to make like a slip knot on my leg and be very uncomfortable. So instead of doing that, we put the rope to the inside. Now it bites on itself when it crosses back over itself and it will stay right where I put it. Swiss seats are uncomfortable no matter what you do, but you can make them a little less uncomfortable by keeping everything nice and tight as you're tying it. Same thing for right side. Free end goes from top to bottom the inside. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, after I've got both sides done, I'm going to come back over to my non-dominant side. I'm going to tie a square knot. The square knot is the rope is going to cross left over right, cinch it up so it's tight, then right over left. You have to alternate left over right, right over left, or right over left, left over right, or else it won't turn out right. Now as a backup knot, uh, they used to teach that you could do two half hitches. You can, but uh, one overhand knot is more secure than two half hitches, and it doesn't take up any more rope, so why not do an overhand? I do an overhand by tying an overhand around the rope that's going around my hip. Dress it up nice and tight. In case you're not sure what an overhand knot is, this is an overhand knot. The rope comes into the knot the same way it goes out. That's an overhand. Very simple. I'm going to do that on both sides. Again, tying around the rope that's already on my waist. Dress it up nice and tight. Now this is a long rope. I have a lot of extra. This can all get shoved in my pocket so it's not dangling on the ground. Now that our Swiss seat is built, we're ready to build the near side anchor. I'm going to take my rope that I'm using and tie a figure eight on a bite. Now this is a bite. A bite is when the rope bends back, but it does not cross itself. That's a loop. This is a bite. So a figure eight on a bite involves two bites. I make a first bite, nice and big, plenty of room to work with. I'm going to make another bite. Now I make this uh, figure eight by taking the rope all the way around the rope. It does a full turn and then it comes the free end runs back up through the loop that I'm holding up at the top. 
you know it's correct because it looks like an 8. If you don't do enough turns, you're only going to end up with an overhand. So, this is what it would look like if you did it wrong. This is a hard knot too, you could use this, but I would recommend using a figure 8 because it's easier to break down. It's easier to untie once you put a lot of weight on it. So this is considered a hard knot, meaning after I dress it up, this knot is not going to slip out of itself. It's not going to fail. Unless you just exceed the weight limitations of the rope, then the rope could break. The carabiner goes through, and then the rope goes around the tree and gets snapped back onto itself. Close the screw gate. That's the near side anchor. Now, ordinarily, the purpose of doing a rope bridge is to move multiple people or pieces of equipment across rough terrain and usually a party would stay here at the the near tree the near anchor and you'd send one guy across with a rope to set up the far side today all i have is myself so i'll be doing that job too so now that the near side anchor is done we're ready to send the first climber across to the far side the climber usually would be belayed uh, so he's going to use his seat harness and clip the rope into his seat harness that way the guy who's standing here at the near side anchor can belay him across. So I'm going to tie another figure eight on a bite, make that first bite, one more bite. Rope goes all the way around, back up through the loop at the top. Okay, that's ready to go. To safety this into my seat harness, carabiner. Carabiner, we start out with a screw gate facing away from us and down. It comes up through all three ropes. It gets turned around so it faces back away from me. That way, as I'm walking and as I'm working, the screw gate is not going to rub up against my belt and open up. So if there was someone staying on this side, he would belay me across, but since I'm the only person here today, I'll just walk across. All right, I'm at the far side anchor now. I can go ahead and unclip myself. Now this same figure eight on the bike, goes around the tree and gets clipped to itself just like the near side anchor. Screw gate is closed. All right, I'm gonna tighten that up. Okay, it's ready to go. Now we'll go back to the far side or the near side. We're back here at the near side anchor. I can go ahead and take this carabiner off, take the rope from around the tree. Now to make tension, the rope's running over to the far side anchor, I need to pull it as tight as I can. So to do that, I'm going to use an alpine butterfly knot. Determining the distance of your alpine butterfly knot from the near side anchor is really just a matter of trial and error. After you've done it a few times, you can get used to it. This is how you make a, an alpine butterfly knot. The far side rope is running, the rope is running from the far side anchor over the top of my hand. My thumb is up, my palm is toward me, and I'm going to give myself plenty of slack to work with. The rope gets wrapped around one, two times. That creates three wraps that are looking at me as I look at my palm. Now, the looser you have this, the easier it's going to be to work with. So I'm going to loosen that up a little bit. Okay, we'll call these ropes one, two, and three. Two, I'm going to reach behind number three. Two goes behind three. Then it goes across both, then it goes back behind both, turning each way. Once it goes behind both, I can grab the loop, cinch it up, and then these two legs going to the near and far side anchor, I can cinch those up. This is a fixed knot for the middle of the line. This will not slide to the left or right, and it's a secure anchor point. I can put a carabiner in here, and I can put all the weight I want to on this carabiner. Now that I have my alpine butterfly tied, I'm going to put a carabiner through it, and the rope is going to run back around the near side anchor. Note, this alpine butterfly is very close to this anchor because of the short rope that I'm working with and because I'm only working as one person. Usually, the alpine butterfly knot would have to be a couple arms breadth away from the near side anchor. Because I wanted to do this with only three carabiners, I'm going to go ahead and untie, take the carabiner out of the end of the rope, 
and untie this figure eight on the bike. Okay, this is how I'm going to create tension on this rope and get it as tight as I can. Usually, you'd have a party of at least five or six guys pulling on this rope. Right now, it's only me, so I'm not going to be able to get it very tight. You'll find even with a static rope, you'll still have to pull a lot to get tension on this thing. Now, this rope wrapped around the tree, the tree creates a lot of friction on the rope. It acts as somewhat of a progress capture. So as I tighten this thing up, I still have to maintain tension on this rope, but the tree is going to soak up a lot of the tension with friction. So it's going to help me out. Now after I've got the rope as tight as I can get it, the rope's going to go back around the tree once, twice, three times. Now that tree has added a ton of friction. I'm holding virtually no tension on this rope right now, and this thing's still extremely taut. Now because I wanted to save carabiners, uh, I'm going to have to tie a figure eight retrace. That'll look similar to the figure eight on a bite, only we're getting about there a different way. For this figure eight on a bite, I'm going to start by making the bite. Now the rope goes around, makes a full turn around the rope, and the free running end goes around this loop in the same direction that I started. So since I started to the front and not to the back, it's going to go one full turn and come in from the front side. I'm going to cinch that up and dress it up to where I think it needs to be. Alright, that's pretty close. I'll throw the rope around, the rope that's already running around the tree. And at this point I'm just going to retrace the figure eight that's already tied. So coming in from the opposite direction, following right along the path of the rope. So the end result looks exactly the same as a figure eight on a bite, and it is the same. We just got there a little different way. That's the great thing about a tensionless anchor too. The rope is loose here, but extremely tight here. All right, now that our rope bridge is built, it's ready to go, it's time to get safety in and start crossing. So the carabiner, the screw gate, goes away from you and down, come in from the bottom side up, then rotate the carabiner back around where the screw gate is away from you. Once you get on the rope, get clipped in, close your screw gate. Now there are two ways you can go across here. Now you can hang from the bottom of the rope and move yourself across like this. But that's a lot of work on your upper body and it ends up wearing out your arms really quickly. If you have to move a long distance like that, chances are you're going to have to stop and take several rests and it's just not very comfortable. There's another way to do it that's a little less comfortable, but it requires quite a bit less energy because you can use your feet to help you. That's to climb over the top of the rope. Now I can pull with my arms and I can also push with this rear foot. 